Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. So there were 19,600 games published on Steam in 2025, and all of Steam made about $16 billion. However, all of those games, most of them made $0, but that's not a problem. So if, as you know, Steam is absolutely massive. If you search for the top new release list, you can scroll down constantly and it will take you quite a while to get through each individual day. There's a ton of games coming out every single day. And now that we're at the end of 2025, we have some actual numbers, some actual stats for the entire year. And these come from the excellent website SteamDB. That one contains a mountain of data all about Steam. And for example, they track all games released per year, which allows them to build some really nice graphs. So up here is the page where we can see the Steam game release per month. And it's actually kind of funny how over here they've got a little indicator to showcase when green lights are, then when Steam directs are. In case you don't know Steam Greenlight, that's what Steam previously used to have. Back when I published my very first Steam game, Survivor Squad, back then I had to go through Greenlight, that was the active program at the time. Basically you need to get a bunch of yes votes and the top games that got the most amount of votes they were allowed to get onto Steam. I made this really nice video showcasing that journey, so basically it took me 200 days to get enough votes to be allowed to get on Steam. So that was a program that was active from about 2012, and from that to about 2017, that was it, you had to get those votes in order to get onto Steam. And then of course Steam Direct, that is basically where you just pay 100 bucks and you can get on Steam and publish anything you want. So over here we can see the graph, so previously before all of those there were very very few games launched on Steam, then we Steam Greenlight quite a bit, and Steam Direct definitely quite a lot, and now we're at, what is it, about 2000 games being published every single month. That's definitely quite a lot, and over here we've got the Steam game releases by year. So again, before Steam Direct, before all of those, previously there were only like 300-400 games published every single year, then up to the thousands, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, and now in this year, it is gearing up to 19,700 games. So we have definitely quite a lot of games. Steam is definitely massive, both in terms of the number of developers, but also in terms of the number of players. Steam is basically constantly hitting records. We can see per every single day, they've got something like 40 million active users active at the exact same time. They are concurrent. That is an insane amount. And monthly, that is about some like 200 million monthly active users. That is an insane amount of people. So technically, if those millions of people are playing 20,000 new games every single year, then that's enough people to make all of those games find success. But of course, that is not exactly what happens. So like I wrote here, so based on the stats, there were 19,600 games published in 2025. And out of those, only 3,000 got over 100 reviews, while 9,500 got under 10 reviews. So up here, they've got a real nice graph, so the Steam game releases by review count. And review count is a very great proxy for success. I made a video a while ago on how basically you can estimate revenue sales numbers based on the number of reviews. You can look at the number of reviews that a certain game has and multiply it by a certain multiplier. And using that, you can sort of guesstimate how many sales they've had and then multiply that by the price of the game and you can get a rough estimate of the gross revenue. So that means games that have quite a lot of reviews, chances are they are very successful. But over here, we can actually see, so for this year, so no reviews, 2200 games, 1 to 9 reviews, 7200 games. So you can see most games get pretty much no reviews whatsoever. In order to have a successful game, you probably need at the very least something like 50 reviews. The multiplier is usually 40, so if you multiply 50 reviews by 40, you can get a rough estimate of about 2,000 copies sold. So if you have some like $10 game, then those 2,000 copies would be about $20,000. So if you're living on a low cost of living country, if you, and if you make a game relatively quickly in let's say 3 to 6 months, if so, perhaps this is basically the bare minimum you need, and basically anything less than that, chances are it's not quite successful. So over here on these stats, yep, we can use that and we can see, so the number of games that got at least 50 reviews, yep, those are really about 3,000 games. So looking at these stats, these seem quite negative, so it seems like most games actually fail. However, thankfully, that is not exactly the case, or rather, I should say, that is not the only way to interpret this data. I'm going to explain what I mean in a little bit, but over here, so there are still some more stats on this report, where they mentioned the estimated $16 billion in total Steam revenue compared to $15 billion in 2024. So this is the amount for the entirety of Steam, not just the games published in 2025. So the entirety of Steam is estimated to have generated about $16 billion. That is an insane amount of money, that is definitely quite a lot. And then Gamalytic, another great website, this one also has some more stats. And over here, importantly, they've got the median revenue per game in 2025, that is just $318, where only 23.4% of games made over $5,000. So you have over here this website, Gamalytic, this one has a bunch of awesome data, and specifically a bunch of revenue estimates. So in their estimate, the entire total revenue for games just launched in 2025 was about $5.5 billion. So that suggests the entire back catalog made about $10 billion. So that's pretty insane just how big the back catalog is. Median revenue, $317, average price, $8, and average playtime, 5.6 hours. So over here we can see, yep, 61%, so the big part of the pie chart, this one is really making under $1,000. Then we've got a little bit making between 1 and 5k, and then all of these small things, and basically only 2% make over $1 million. Then here we also got the price distribution, so most games are priced between 0 and $5. And yep, so we've got a bunch of interesting stats over here. And over here, under revenue by percentile, here we see the nice regular hockey stick. 
So basically most games are really down here on the graph. Most games make basically no money whatsoever. And then a very tiny percentage of games, they make pretty much all the money. So again, this chart over here, this one seems quite scary. There are a ton of games coming out and it seems like most games do not find success. However, like I wrote here, so, but as always, while these charts seem a bit scary, they make it seem that success is pretty much impossible. That is really not the reality. Keep in mind how this includes literally all games published on Steam, meaning it includes games that were made by professional developers with the intent of making a living, but it also includes hobbyist games from developers just making something for the fun of it with no intent of making money. It includes someone's first Flappy Bird game clone as they're learning. It also includes a bunch of random asset flips and even some AI slot. So this is really the crucial part whenever you look at these stats, which again, these seem quite demotivating. It seems that it's pretty much impossible to find success. But if your goal is to be a professional indie game developer, if your goal is to take this seriously as an actual job, as an actual profession, then you are really not competing with all of these games. So looking at these numbers is pretty misleading. If you are a professional developer with actual skills that are actually trying to make a commercial viable product, if so, then you are really not competing with someone's first Flappy Bird game. Again, you can just go on the new releases page and you can browse all of these games that come out. And you can see how a lot of these very much did not intend to find success. A lot of these are clearly some developers' very first game. They were making something just for the fun of it. A lot of these were someone just making their very first game. A lot of these are really very much not intended to compete with professional games made by professional developers. So if you are a professional developer, then you are not competing with all those 19,600 games. It would be nice if there was a way to separate those two categories, professional versus non-professional games, but I really don't think there's any way to slice the data like that. This would be really nice, but how exactly do you go through this entire list and try to figure out which one of these were games meant to find commercial success and which one of these were really just someone's first attempt at making a video game? There's really no objective way to measure that, so I really don't think there's any way that anyone can basically calculate the data like that. Speaking of numbers, for example, it is interesting to see how the rate of successful games stays relatively constant. So this chart shows how games over 100 reviews are slowly increasing year by year, with just a slight dip compared to last year. So there are simultaneously more games that don't find an audience at all, and also more games that find massive success. And if so basically over here on this chart, we can essentially ignore the games that have no reviews, 1 to 9, 10 to 50, and if we want, even ignore those, so leaving only 100 plus review games. And over here we can see, yep, it's a nice stable trend, so there's really not that massive spike like we see over here. So over here we saw a massive spike up in 2018, then a massive spike in 2024, and over here really it seems pretty linear, pretty constant. And these are definitely successful games if you make 100 reviews, Chances are you do have a very successful game. So the rate of success is increasing. There's really only a slight dip between last year and this year. But that is probably because the games that were released this year, let's say in the past one to two months, probably haven't had enough time to reach the 500 review bucket. But as a general trend, this one seems to be a nice slow upward trend. So yeah, it is basically like that. There are more games coming out and more of those games are not finding an audience at all. But also more games are finding quite a lot of success. In terms of success, this year was definitely a very good year for a bunch of very tiny teams, so it is crazy to see how many awesome games come out this year from tiny teams that found insane success. And yeah, here on Gamalytic, you can basically list all the games that were published just in 2025, and you can basically sort by revenue. And if you want over here on main genres, you can choose the indie subgenre. And over here you can see basically a ton of indie games that made a ton of money. So the big one is Schedule 1. This was definitely one of the biggest hits of this year. It's really insane how this is actually from a solo developer. And I think it was actually their first or close to their first actual professional game. So it is insane. This one, 170,000 reviews. That is an insane score. And you can see over here, that is basically an estimated revenue of about $132 million. Again, for a solo developer, that is insane. That's insane success. Then you've got Peak, also another massive one. The studio behind this, they actually decided to work on this game as a quick short-term project in between their big projects and turns out to be a massive success. So it made about $84 million. Then of course we've got Silk Song. It's been heavily awaited for a very long time, $77 million. Dispatch, another big one, $56 million. Escape from Duck Off, this one came out just recently and already made $54 million. Then you've got Rematch, Are We There Yet, Delta Rune, and Megabonk, of course, another solo dev, $28 million. So yep, as you can see, tons and tons of stuff, even blueprints over here, $15 million. So yeah, a lot of awesome, very tiny or small teams making millions upon millions of dollars. So yep, yeah, that's basically the fun dichotomy in the stats here. Simultaneously, more games are making basically no money at all. And then you've got games from a solo developer making literally $130 million. Yep, like I wrote here, so I love analyzing stats like these, and I love it how Steam keeps growing and growing. That's an awesome thing for pretty much every single Steam developer. If Steam keeps growing, then hopefully there's more room for more games to find success. Which again, based on this chart, yep, there are definitely more games finding success. The fact that a solo dev can make a game like Schedule 1 and generate $130 million is really just bonkers, that's insane. Although, I wish there was a way to analyze this data to figure out how many middle-class developers exist, meaning how many devs are making games that generate about 50000 per year. 
that would be a really great thing to do that analysis. But again, it's very, very difficult because you can't really know what was the budget behind the game, what is the team behind the game, or rather it is very difficult to find that data. You can't really just scrape it just like you can easily scrape Steam. But I would be curious to see those stats. So out of all of these games, how many of them represent some developers' middle class living? Which again, if you know if you got just about 50 reviews, meaning if your game generates just about $20,000, First of all, that game will continue selling over time. So if you make about $20,000 in the first year or in the first six months of the game being out, over the entire lifetime, chances are it's going to make two to three times that. So technically, if you make one of those games once per year, technically that would be about 60k gross revenue lifetime. So depending on your cost of living, depending on the country that you're in, chances are that could be a nice middle class living. Or on the other hand, there are some developers that might be making fewer games, but make a ton of games. They publish like four or five games, small games, really focused games per year. And each of those doesn't have to make an insane amount of money in order to generate a nice living. So yep, again, it would be really nice to be able to see those stats, but I don't think there's any way to do that. So the good news is that Steam keeps growing, both in terms of developers as well in terms of players. And thankfully with this video, hopefully now, if you see this number, this number that seems very scary, hopefully now you know, don't really be too scared. If you're making games with professional intent, if you're already a professional yourself, if you're not a complete beginner just making your first game, if so, then chances are you are really not competing with all of these tons and tons of games that don't find any success at all. Chances are, if you're already a little bit skilled, if you're focusing on making a nice marketable idea with good execution, if so, chances are you're really just competing for the other ones. And hopefully over here, by looking at this chart, the number of successful developers is also increasing. So hopefully you yourself can be represented over here by one of these charts. By the way, I wrote about this in my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is what I write every single week with the latest Game Dev news and any interesting articles that I come across every single week. There's a new issue published every Sunday. You can sign up for free, so check it out to the link in the description. Also, quick mention, it's now January, so I've lowered the price on my problem solving course. This is the awesome course that teaches you the most valuable skill you can learn. If you want, you can pick it up right now, where I'm actually currently editing the free YouTube video that will contain a sample of the course. I'm planning to publish that on Monday, so stay tuned for that. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.